The year is 2009 at the Geneva Motor Show in Switzerland. In the corner of the exhibition sits a company called MDI, a father and son team with an unusual contraption. A vehicle not powered by diesel, hydrogen or electricity, but instead on the very air you and I breathe. The vehicle was their revolutionary air car. With prototypes on the road, pilot projects in place with Air France KLM and deals signed with Tata Motors, there were ambitions to launch the air car in India in 2020. But to this day, no AirPods are in production. So what happened? Was it bad business? Or is a compressed air piston engine just a bad idea? I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Zero Off Deep Dive. To get a better understanding of the engine that powers the MDI AirPod, I decided to buy a simple one that powered a toy car. The car has an onboard compressor of sorts, which pushes air into the bottle using this large syringe and a simple valve system. Then, when the tank is up to pressure, if I release the wheels and let air flow into the pneumatic piston engines, the car will begin to move. As the wheels spin, the spool valve directs compressed air into the cylinder, forcing the piston out. When the piston then starts to retract and come back down, the spool valve allows the gas to be exhausted into the atmosphere. This process sends torque through the gears and to the wheels, making them spin and propel the car. Now, time to see it in action. I set the car down at the end of my street, which you will see the council have all but neglected. After a small push, the engine overcomes the initial inertia and begins to fly down the road as if it was possessed by the spirit of Lewis Hamilton himself. The claimed range of this car is about 50 meters, much less than the equivalent electric car toy, but we'll get to that later. After a close call with the pavement, the car straightens itself up and begins to slow down as the pressure in the storage tank drops too low to keep the engine running. A rough measurement on Google Maps puts the total run in at about 80 meters, and the pressure gauge shows the tank is well and truly drained. Although similar in principle, the full-sized engine in the MDI AirPod, designed by Guy Negri and his son Cyril, works a little differently. With Formula One and Bugatti experience under their belts, they designed something rather creative. MDI's compressed air engine has pistons of different diameters in an inline arrangement, forming a multi-stage gas compression engine. At the start of the cycle, compressed air at 20 bar enters the cylinder with a smaller piston, pushing it down to do work. When the small piston finishes its stroke, the air, now at lower pressure, moves into the cylinder with a larger piston. The bigger piston with a larger diameter can be moved with this lower pressure air to keep powering the engine, turning the shaft that drives the wheels. Overall efficiency is further improved because the air in the cylinders can warm up the incoming air, making the process smoother. Both pistons work together to release the used air, which exits as cool air through the exhaust system. Including the design of this air engine, it took MDI over 10 years to create a 220 kilogram prototype car that claimed to reach 40 miles an hour, have a range of 200 kilometers on a single tank of air, and fill up in 90 seconds. There is now a later version, the AirPod 2.0, which MDI describes as a quadricycle or urban mobility solution with room for two people a maximum speed of 80 kilometers an hour, and a range of 100 kilometers. It's a bit of a downgrade in specs from the original, and the weight also goes up to 350 kilograms, raising some questions. MDI says the reason we don't see AirPods in use for small-scale transportation is not due to technical barriers, but down to regulatory battles and business models based on selling complex international licensing rights. From what I've read, their $5 million Shark Tank deal fell apart because the founders couldn't agree with investors on rights for North America. Though, I'm not fully convinced that technical issues didn't play their part too. There is enormous appeal of a car that you could refuel in under three minutes using the same air you'd inflate your car tires with. Or you could plug it in at home for longer charge times 
using the small onboard compressor and ideally electricity from a renewable energy source. So are MDI and other air engine inventors right in saying that it's just our minds that are closed to this too good to be true idea? Or is there a fundamental problem with pneumatic propulsion? The harshest critics say that compressed air is simply not practical as an energy source for vehicles due to the laws of thermodynamics. Running on the release and expansion of pressurized atmospheric gas creates inherent inefficiencies. In addition, only a limited amount of energy can be stored. Some experts estimate the AirPods range to be only a third of that claimed by MDI. The AirPod operates with a tank capable of holding 80 kilograms of compressed air, theoretically storing up to 11.2 kilowatt hours of energy when fully expanded at a constant temperature. However, actual usable energy is significantly reduced due to inefficiencies in the expansion process. The pressure must first be dropped from 350 bar to 20 bar before feeding air into the engine, resulting in nearly half the stored energy being lost. As a result, only 5.6 kilowatt hours remains available to drive the AirPods wheels. MDI projects that improvements could boost this output to 6.2 kilowatt hours, though their best tests so far have achieved only 4.4 which translates to an approximate range of 160 kilometers. Outside experts, however, cast doubt even on these figures. Clodic from Ecole de Mines estimates that due to further inefficiencies, the AirPod may only deliver 1.9 kilowatt hours of usable mechanical energy, which would restrict its range to just 68 kilometers. Additionally, the energy cost of refilling the tank significantly reduces round trip efficiency. MDI's compressors operate at 58% efficiency, which combined with other factors results in a plug to wheel efficiency of just 23%. Whilst MDI argues that pneumatic technology is more affordable than lithium ion batteries, the low energy efficiencies and limited range have led some experts to advocate for pneumatic hybrids instead. Such hybrids would combine compressed air storage with small fuel burning units potentially offering a more practical solution for city driving. But at that point, I wonder if you're just better off going fully electric. Torque is another problem, especially as the engine starts up. To make things even harder, as compressed air expands in the engine to do work, it naturally cools down, reducing its pressure further and therefore the force in the engine. To counteract this, MDI's design apparently optimizes the expansion and cooling processes to minimize energy loss, and high pressure storage tanks ensure a constant supply of compressed air. Lightweight composite materials and narrow wheels reduce the friction further, meaning the engine doesn't have to work so hard or deliver as much torque to the vehicle to keep it moving. US licensee Zero Pollution Motors say the AirPod has excellent torque and can in fact climb hills. Then again, claims made back in 2009 that the technology could be scaled to bus size vehicles appear to have gone away. So is it all just hot air? It doesn't seem to be completely dead and there are some designs out there, but either the technicalities or economics of the real world seem to be stopping this from going mainstream. And although MDI pioneered the technology, it appears to be the commercial partners who are really trying to get this to market. Licensee Zero Pollution Motors in the US, who secured that ill-fated Shark Tank deal, says you can reserve your AirPod now. And then there's Air Futures in New Zealand, who intend to serve the Australasia market. But as for the big corporate deals, both Tata and Air France KLM's plans fell apart. The range limitations, cooling issues, low energy densities, and costs of storing compressed air at high pressure were just too much. I couldn't find exact details about what happened with the Air France KLM trial, but they presumably suffered the same weaknesses, especially at a time that EV technology took over. Does this mean it's all over for air-powered vehicles? Possibly not. Other pioneers in the field from the University of Ontario are still working hard on their isothermal compressed air vehicle that uses low pressure air tanks a rotary engine, and excess heat to power a phase-changed heat exchanger. 
The air-powered prototype reached up to 90% of a lithium-ion vehicle's efficiency, with a range of 140 kilometers. This may not rival the range of EVs, but it's still no feat to become this efficient using fresh air as an energy source. And not to mention none of the rare earth metals or mining concerns that EVs have. The technology may not be commercialized yet, but there are plenty of inventors working on it. They haven't given up, and nor have AirPods licensees. So you never know. As niche as it may be, this is still something that you could find yourself riding in if all comes to fruition. Something else you might find yourself doing is using today's sponsor Onshape to design 3D models of anything you can imagine, right after subscribing if you're new here. Onshape is a professional grade computer aided design software that is completely free for all makers and hobbyists forever. It's even free for engineers and companies for six months so they can properly try it out. You can set up everything in two minutes without any downloads and start making stuff straight away, like I've done for so many projects now. It's my go-to modeling software when I'm designing or 3D printing things, and it should be yours too. Because Onshape is built with a cloud-native architecture, it enables features such as real-time collaboration, seamless integration with mobile and tablet for use with iOS and Android, auto-saving, and built-in product data management. The GitHub-inspired collaboration means teams can work more efficiently as new designs can be created without disrupting the main design before being merged in later. File sharing is also as simple as just sending a link, like the ones that I've left in the description. Onshape is also continuously adding new features, so make sure to get a free account and start creating whatever you can think of using onshape.pro slash Xeroth which is also linked down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.